Café. Oh, they gave me five. <laughs> oh, that's something on my desk spring loaded itself into the air. Okay. Hello, everybody. What is air training? Well, it's kind of a funny thing. Most people seem to think it is about training our actual ears to do the work. Right, it's called air training, so you would think. <laughs> um, and most people are confused by this. They think, how are my ears going to figure out a song? They just hear things. How do they know what music is, right? I, I, and I understand that. Um, but actually, it's not about our ears at all. In fact, you might be surprised to discover, although you might possibly, if you ever thought about it for long enough, you'd probably figure this out anyway. But what's happening with our ears is the same as what has always happened, right? When you train your ear, you're not going to hear with more specificity. You're not going to, suddenly your ears aren't going to be picking up things that weren't there before, right? Your ears aren't doing that. The awesome news is that how your ears work now is how they need to work. Your ears work absolutely perfectly. But in terms of like what you hear, that is what you are always going to hear, right? Your ears are going to do what they've always done. Ear training is actually kind of a misnomer because we're not actually training our ears. What we're training is our brain. So when we say playing by ear, what we actually mean, and this could blow your mind, is playing by mind. <laughs> Instead of playing by ear, we're playing by brain, okay? Because our ears are doing the same thing they've always done, right? What we are training is how our brain interprets the information that our ear is sending us. Our ear is sending us the same information all the time. It's just that we are so used to blocking out in our brains information that we do not think is important in the moment. We've still got these brains sometimes that I think, you know, they just, they look for the most important thing so that we don't get too overwhelmed by everything that's happening around us in the world. Like when spring-loaded hydraulic things happen on a computer desk if we listened intently to every single thing that was going on around us it, life would just be too much exhausting right our brain has a way of sort of blocking out details that we don't need to hear so by ear training we're essentially telling our brain that these details are important and taking those details that our ear is always hearing but that our mind is just really good at not paying attention to. And we're deciding to pay attention to those details. About sulfate, you might be asking, because this, if you've already looked into air training or you've done some air training before, you may already know about sulfate. Okay, so one of the parts of air training is to decipher where notes are in relation to each other. And it's super important to play in by ear. And this is where most air training pro programs, programs, programs will focus their training, their exercises, right? Um, it is why the very famous and very wonderful technique of solfege is used. And if you've not heard of solfege before, think the sound of music, do a deer, do a deer, a female deer. Ray, a drop of golden sun. So all those syllables, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, da, do. Why did I say da? <laughs> um, that that's our uh, the most basic form of solfege. We can get more difficult than that, um, you know, and have different syllables for sharps and flats and things like that as well. It gets very crazy. Essentially, what this helps us to do is train our ear to recognize melodic intervals. Okay, that's better. So the distances between all those notes in the octave, and then of course we can go over an octave as well to have even more than 12 different intervals. So from an interval from, you know, the C all the way up to a D would be an interval of a ninth, and then we can have a tenth, and so on. But mainly in solfege, we, we're using those uh, 
seven notes or eight notes, seven or eight notes in a scale. And then we can have shops and flats and things like that as well. But that's what solfege helps us with is learning those intervals and memorize, having a way to memorize those. So it's super helpful. Um, but however, there is much more required to playing by ear than simply learning how to tell the distance or an interval between one note and another note. That particular skill, though, is a is a hundred percent the first step, is a hundred percent the foundation to learning by ear. What that helps us to do is find one note, and then through using our solfege and our ability to tell the distance between notes and intervals, finding the next note, and then finding the next note, and then finding the next note. So that allows us to begin playing by ear. But if we want to get better at the skill of playing by ear, training our ear to become better at deciphering what we hear and playing it on our instrument, we need to go, we can't only do solfege, right? We need to go beyond just intervals, just melodic intervals. So, you know, the takeaway here is essential. It's a foundation of ear training, a solfege, but it's not everything, okay? We need to expand our understanding of what ear training is, okay? How does ear training help me to play by ear? You know, if you've done ear training before, especially if you've done solfege before, you might have been a little bit gutted that you can't, that you learned your solfege, you learned how to do intervals, but you can't necessarily play by ear, right? You know, there's a lot more to a song than simply figuring out one note at a time, which normally helps us with things like bass lines, and it can also help us with our melodies, because those are both things that are one note at a time. But there's other things that we need to be able to recognize other than simply melodic intervals. We need to be able to recognize pitches that are played together at the same time we call those chords we need to recognize rhythms so that we can play melodies and riffs faithfully to account without needing the notation so we need to work on our ability to count through and steadily through a rhythm a rhythmic pattern uh, without being swayed by the syncopation of the rhythm. We need to recognize patterns because without it, we'd need to figure out hundreds of different notes in a song, right? If we ha imagine, you kind of do this automatically, but it's something that we can train just like everything else to get better. And the fourth thing is, so we've got recognizing chords, which is pitches played together. Also recognizing rhythms, we need to recognize patterns. And so working on our memory and recall, and we need to recognize chord progressions. So that's cutting down our workload of, you know, individual, not only are we not having to work out the individual notes in a chord, if we can rec recognize chord progressions, then we don't have to even, we don't even have to uh, individually figure out the chords. So all of these different things that we work on are cutting down the time that we need to be able to figure out a song. It's fabulous. In order to strengthen your ability to hear and identify all those elements that I just talked about, chords, rhythms, recalling, patterns, and chord progressions, you need to train, okay? As with any sort of training, this is about repetitive exercises that get gradually more difficult over time okay it's the same with any sort of training what kind of training have you guys done before have you guys ever you know have you ever done any sort of training in any different area whether it's uh you know training on your computer or training at your job or training at the gym is that essentially right we can all agree it's repeating something until it becomes more natural and then you sort of add something else to make it a bit more difficult or to level up so that's what we do with their training Another important aspect of ear training is to step outside of the repetitive exercises every now and then and use your listening skills in a real life practical situation, right? It correlates with our any sort of physical training. Imagine, you know, if you're going to the gym training your muscles, like people can go to the gym and do the same weights all the time and get heavier weights, heavier weights, just doing, you know, the same exercises every day. And I'm getting so strong and I'm so proud of myself. And then they go play like a game of volleyball 
and the next day your arms are sore. So we want to do the same with our air training. We want to do our repetitive exercises because that's how we build strength and that's, you know, how we can, uh, you know, make progress on a daily basis. But then we also need to make sure that we are actually going and trying to work out a song regularly, right? So that we can take those skills that we're learning and apply them in the real world, I say real world context, in an actual practical way. Well, it's kind of like everything. So if you were to tackle everything in one go, then yes, it would be very difficult. Uh, However, that's not how we train. You don't go to the gym and just pick up the heaviest weight and start lifting it and go, oh, I can't do it. I'm just, I'm not strong. It's not, doesn't work for me. I don't have muscles. And then quit the gym or say goodbye to your money that you've already put down which is generally how gyms work (laughs) no we don't do that we go and we we get the weight that is almost is so light that it almost seems like a waste of time but we do that super lightweight sort of feels like you're lifting air right but you use that to get used to the movement of your arms and I'm just cracking up at myself pretending to do weights. I did used to do weightlifting, so I'm not completely ignorant until I hurt myself. Um, But you get used to the technique. And then once your technique is good, then you get the next weight up and you start to lift slightly heavier and slightly heavier and slightly heavier, all the while making sure that your technique is good, right? So you don't hurt yourself. We're not going to hurt ourselves when we're air training, but we do it in the same way. So we will start with exercises that are almost too simple. And then you getting used to the process and the way that, are, you know, my courses will, you know, guide you through, my, my new course will guide you through, you'll get used to the process of what happens and what the exercises are like, and then they'll get progressively more difficult. And that's how we do it. If you guys want to get in on board with this course, uh, you are going to want to sign up for my active listening challenge. This active listening challenge is going to be happening right before the course is released. And I like to do a little free, um, you know, lead in to each course that I do as a way to prepare you guys uh, for it and also to get excited about what we're going to learn. So if you haven't already, sign up to the listening challenge at that URL there, mypianopitnet.com forward slash listening challenge. Thank you so much for coming, you guys. I hope you have a wonderful week and remember when you do sit at the piano to play it like you mean it. And I will see you guys next week with our next broadcast.